Hello ulit sa inyo mga ka-learners! Based on what you learned about vertebrates in part A of this lesson, can you tell what invertebrates are? Invertebrates are animals without backbones. Crabs, spiders, and insects are included in this group. Invertebrates do not have any bones. Most invertebrates don't even have hard coverings. Their bodies are soft inside and out. Invertebrates can be divided into two large groups, the simple invertebrates and the complex invertebrates. Simple invertebrates are invertebrates that have simple nervous systems and digestive systems. Their skeletal and muscular systems are very primitive or non-existent. Complex invertebrates also have simple nervous and digestive systems, but all of them have muscular and skeletal systems. Among the simple invertebrates are sponges, coelentrates, annelids, flatworms, and roundworms. Did you know that the sponge you use for bathing and washing your dishes is actually an animal? It is a simple invertebrate that is made up of many cells. Sponges are found underwater. They live attached to rocks or other objects that do not move from place to place. Despite the absence of mobility, they are able to get food to eat. How do they do this? Sponges are made of two layers of cells around a central cavity. The outer layer is the epidermis, which contains many pores. The inner layer is made up of collar cells that have whip-like flagella that wave back and forth, creating water currents. Food particles in the water that move toward the sponge are trapped and digested by the collar cells. Wastes leave through the opening at the top of the central cavity. Coelentrates also live underwater like sponges. However, they are more complex than sponges and have cells that are organized into tissues. Corals, sea anemones, and jellyfish are all coelentrates. Echinoderms are spiny skin invertebrates that live in oceans. Among the characteristics that make echinoderms unique is that their bodies can be divided into five more or less similar portions around a central line. Flatworms have more complex structures compared to sponges and coelentrates. They are the simplest worms. Most flatworms are parasites. They live in or on other organisms for food. One flatworm that is not a parasite is the planarian, which lives in fresh water. It has sense organs in its head that are sensitive to light and touch and which help it find food. It uses its digestive system to break down food. Roundworms, on the other hand, have smooth, rounded bodies with pointed ends. They are found almost everywhere. Many types of roundworms are parasites. One of these is the Ascaris, which is found in the digestive tracts of many Filipino children. Now, it's time for us to learn about complex invertebrates. Included in this group of invertebrates are annelids, mollusks, arthropods, and insects. Annelids are segmented worms. What annelids are you most familiar with? Look at this picture. What worms do you see in the picture? These are an earthworm and a leech. Earthworms live in the soil where they get their food. Leeches, on the other hand, are blood-sucking parasites. The bodies of annelids are divided into segments that specialize in different tasks. Annelids have various organ systems formed from their tissues. Do you often eat mollusks? You probably find them delicious, as most people do. This group of invertebrates includes shellfish, squid, and snails. Mollusks have soft bodies that are covered by a fold of tissue called mantle. The digestive system of a mollusk is found under its mantle. Mollusks also have a muscular foot that they can use for movement and for capturing prey. Arthropods make up the largest group of invertebrates. There are almost 1 million species of arthropods that have been identified so far. There are five groups of arthropods, insects, crustaceans, arachnids, centipedes, and millipedes. Arthropods do not have bones inside their body. Insects make up the largest group of arthropods. There have been more than 700,000 species of insects identified so far. All insects have bodies that are made up of three parts. 
the abdomen, thorax, and head. The crustaceans are a group of arthropods that live in the water. Crabs, lobsters, and many kinds of shrimp are included in this group. Arachnids include spiders, scorpions, ticks, and mites. Most arachnids live on land. Spider and scorpions live around buildings and under rocks. Ticks and mites live on the surface of the skin of animals and people. Spiders are helpful to humans because they eat harmful insects. Others, such as scorpions, mites, and ticks, are harmful. Scorpions inflict poisonous bites while mites and ticks suck the blood of animals and people and carry poisonous diseases as well. Centipedes are worm-like animals whose bodies are divided into many narrow segments or sections. Each section has a pair of legs. The centipede has a pair of antenna on its head and a pair of jaws. The centipede's bite is normally painful to people, but not deadly. Millipedes are worm-like, many-legged animals. Some millipedes can have more than 100 pairs of legs. Each segment of the millipede has two pairs of legs. Unlike centipedes, millipedes feed mainly on plants and live in dark, damp places. They are also much slower than centipedes. Classifying animals according to habitat. We can also classify animals according to where they live. The place where an animal lives is its habitat. Based on habitat, animals can be divided into two groups, terrestrial animals and aquatic animals. Terrestrial animals. Terrestrial animals are animals that live on land. A field mouse lives in a rice field. A dog, cat, and hamster live in a house. A bird lives on a tree. An earthworm lives in the soil. All animals that live in rice fields, houses, soil, and in trees are terrestrial animals. Aquatic animals. Aquatic animals are animals that live in water. What aquatic animals can you name? Animals that live in bodies of water, rivers, lakes, ponds, seas, oceans, are aquatic animals. Classifying animals according to food eaten. What foods do you eat? Do you eat the same food that a rabbit or a fish would eat? Because of the differences in the food animals eat, we also classify animals into herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Herbivores. Animals that eat only plants are called herbivores. Carabaos, cows, goats, and elephants are herbivores. Can you name some other herbivores? Carnivores. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. Tigers, lions, leopards, snakes, and hawks are carnivores. Can you name some other carnivores? Omnivores. Animals that eat both plants and other animals are called omnivores. Rats, chickens, and humans are omnivores. Let's remember, animals are found everywhere, in homes and in communities. Animals can be classified according to different categories, namely structure and size, habitat and food eaten. Based on structure and size, there are two kinds of animals, the vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals with backbones, while invertebrates are animals with no backbones. Based on habitat, animals can be divided into terrestrial animals and aquatic animals. In between are the amphibians, which can live both on land and in water. Based on food eaten, there are three groups of animals, the plant-eating herbivores, the meat-eating carnivores, and plant and meat-eating omnivores. That's the end of our lesson on the different classification of animals, mga ka-learners. Kung gusto ninyong malinawan pa, huwag mag-atubiling mag-login sa inyong online account. Marami pang matututunan doon! See you on the next episode!